Dana White Contender Series 2024, week four. Andy and Jim here, we're going to break down these fights. we got some good ones here. Uh, I think there's going to be, I'm going to set the over under at uh, four and a half contracts on, the, on okay. this one. So uh, the over hit last week. So let's start off with uh, Quillen Salkalid and Gage Young. Um, I am really excited for this one. I think this might be the fight I'm most excited to see. I think both these guys are really good. Um, ton of upside. Wouldn't surprise me if both of them end up in the UFC, either because they both get contracts or just we just happen to see them uh, down the road. Um, I will tell you, I lean Salkalid, uh, Jim. I love he's coming out of uh, Eternal MMA. That's a promotion mm-hmm. where, um, you know, Steve Ursaig came out of there. Tom Nolan came out of there. So, you know, these guys have a good record of a of, uh, of moving forward, like we've been fading the A1, Uri Faber's A1 combat guys are 0 and 3. Uh, these turtle uh, MMA guys uh, seem to be pretty good. Um, I like Cyclid. He's very, he's just really smothering with his takedowns. I don't mm-hmm. see a lot of mistakes that he makes when he gets on top. Um, constantly looking for submissions, control, uh, good ground and pound. I like that he already has a five round fight on his resume that he won by decision. So that's great cardio, good durability. He got takedowns in the later rounds, um, and his striking was still pretty pretty on point. So I thought that was pretty impressive. Um, I really like Young. I think he's strong for a fighter. Um, he he likes to get it on the ground too. I just don't think he's quite as polished with his takedown game and with his wrestling game. And when he gets on top, there are some few holes in there, and I think it might just be just because he just hasn't fought the caliber a fighter uh, Salkalid has. So um, I think Young is going to be a little bit better on the feet, but I'm not sure that it stays on the feet um, for a long period of time. Um, I think Young is going to end up in the UFC. I think he puts on a pretty good show here. The lean is going to be on uh, on Quillen, but he's almost minus 200, and it's just not a fight I want to bet on because I think it's really, really close. It wouldn't surprise me if Young um, you know, snuck out the win, uh, it's going to be entertaining. I don't see any value on betting on it, but for purposes of this video and for purposes in the comment section, uh, I will pick <laughs> solid. Uh, what do you, what's your take on this fight? Uh, it's a very close fight. Uh, skill wise, I lean Quinlan. Um, I think that the five round experience and us seeing Gage's cardio, not fade, but kind of just get stuck in first gear. Later on in the fights, I could just see him pulling away. And his length in this division is a problem when it comes to the grappling. When you have a a really, really long fighter, uh, you have to have very solid technique with your grappling. Because they can transition and use sweeps that you're not used to defending. If you have holes in your top control, they're going to exploit that. So I could see him getting throwing up a submission and get into a more advantageous position if he ends up on his back. So, you know, I, I lean Quinlan as far as a total in this, if anything, maybe I think it's a, a chase young gets tired late, but at that point, I mean, we've seen these adrenaline dumps all season with these guys cardio where I don't think either guy is going to have the cardio to finish in the third. So I would actually lean this to go the distance to start out. I, I don't, it's going to be really tough once they're sweaty it's going to have to be a total gas out for, for young for him to get caught in the submission. So, yeah, it's a, it, I'm, I'm most excited for the first fight. So I hope it lives up uh, to the hype there. Um, Unicy Dubin and Shannon Clark. Uh, I have this penciled in as an absolute ass kicking. Um, I think this is the one on the card where we just go, wow, how did she end up um, on contender series? I mean, Anyone notice anything odd about the uh, opponents that Dubin has faced? O and O, O and O, O and O, O and O, O and O. She's yet to fight anyone that wasn't making their debut. Meanwhile, <laughs> you've got Shannon Clark, uh, who's five and O, uh, and she's coming out of LFA. She's fought some some pretty good ones. Um, I will tell you this bulldog choke that she pulled off uh, against Lopez was impressive. Okay. Lopez is a black belt, and mm-hmm. that was a that was a really really nice uh, wait. She's very strong. Um, I, I 
I think Clark is just going to push her up against the fence. Clark does a pretty good job initiating uh, the clinch. And it would surprise me if she, I, I think she can win this wherever she wants to. I think she wants to keep it on the feet. I think she strikes uh, the men. She wants to take the men down. I think she can get the submission. Um, and then I, I watched uh, face-offs and weigh-ins today, and I was just like, oh, man. I mean, mm-hmm. Ben just does not look very strong or powerful. I'm not really sure how or why she's on Contender Series, to be honest with you. Like, in Dubin's last fight, I mean, this, this poor woman, this Ingrid Garcia, this poor woman that Dubin was fighting was terrified to be in there, and yet Garcia got a takedown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> took Dubin down. Not the best technique in the world, mind you. Uh, it was kind of this weak, uh, half-hearted attempt, but it worked. Um, it worked before the uh, corner jumped in and said, okay, we've seen enough. Yeah. Um, I have no reason to think this isn't Shannon Clark by finish. What do you think? I agree with you 100%. The physicality difference is going to be a huge problem. And Dubin is a Taekwondo practitioner. A couple weeks ago, we had a Taekwondo practitioner. We were talking about it on the live show. There's a very, very simple blueprint how to beat them. Anthony Pettis, Pettis wrote it years ago. Crowd him. <laughs> it's that simple. What does Shannon Clark do? She crowds you. She's going to get into the grappling. I even think, like you said, she's probably got more power on the feet. She's just going to watch out for like a snappy head kick in the first couple minutes. And then as soon as Dubin's legs get tired and her arms get tired from the grappling, she's going to be a sitting duck. I don't think she's going to offer absolutely anything off of her back. I can most certainly see her turtle over to her belly and it's just Clark on top. And then at that point it's Clark, however she wants it. Do not play Clark by KO or Clark by decision. This is a prime example of it could go either way. So when that prop comes out, if you're interested in it, take her by finish. It, however she wants to end this, she can end this. Absolutely. Uh, let's go first on this one. Austin Bashy, 12-0 against Dorian Ramos. How do you see this fight going down? Well, Bashy is an interesting case. A very young guy. Very, very physical. Very, very physically gifted. Uh, Dana loves finding these guys. <laughs> <It's so laughs> much sense. You know, young, you know, just started to be able to drink. <laughs> and now we're going to... Sign him to the UFC, but he is not a early 20s, like, you know, string bean body J Super type here. He is pretty stacked here. Now, he was at a bit of a size disadvantage at faceoffs, but 12 and 0, that's a lot of experience at this age. That's good experience, too. Um, I just see there being a massive edge in athleticism. That's really what this comes down to to me, this fight. I can look at skill sets all I want, but this kid really could be something special physically at this point. When I see those 12, I know he doesn't have a loss. Makes me a little nervous sometimes. But I think that he's going to come out fierce and furious early. And I would not be surprised if his cardio holds up. This could look like just he's going to run through it. It would not shock me one bit, but it's going to hinge on the cardio. Ramos. Eh. <laughs> Can I, is that the best way to describe Ramos? Just eh. He fights eh. Yeah. He, he, he's he's really question. slow. It's really boring. Yeah. I watched him take guys down and just lay on him for like rounds. And then on the feet, his striking doesn't terrify me at all, mm-hmm. which is bad because if if I'm looking at Bashi and I'm going, well, what's one of his weaknesses? He can get hit. His, his, his mm-hmm. striking defense is not all that. But Ramos is not hitting anybody that that is going to push someone like Bashy back. Bashy is just going to keep me keep moving forward. I mean, this loss against Camillo. I mean, like it just it looked like Ramos d- just didn't even care. Like you know? it just his body language is bad. He ho hum doesn't mm-hmm. look very physical. Doesn't look very strong. And yeah, I'm with you. This is the. the uh, I, I, I'm not saying Bashy's career is going to go this way. This reminds me of like Sage Northcutt. Yeah, exactly. And it's over the hill in love mm-hmm. with him. Um, and uh, Bashy's not going to let Ramos just cruise either. He's no. Got the energy to make him work. So no. We could no. see a, a gas adrenaline dump here for Ramos if he just can't keep up with him. Yeah. 
Um, I do. I thoroughly enjoyed watching some of Bashy's old, uh, uh, older fights just because the announcers just love him. And <laughs> like anytime he does anything, the crowd goes crazy. And it's, it's one of those great, like kind of local, the local hero, the local favorite, uh, kind of guy. But I think Bashy's, uh, I think Bash is the real deal. And I you're right. He does not look like it doesn't look like that 22 year old body that hasn't no. matured yet. He's got real man strength. Um, so that should be a fun one to watch. Uh, but I'm with you. I think I, I mean, Ramos is what it like really this style on contender series. It's like the exact opposite of what they're looking for. Um, so uh Will Curry and uh Jordan Santos. I just love this picture of Curry. I mean, come on, what is this? <laughs> Like, I, I guess that was a still frame at some point, but I mean, he looks like the Incredible Hulk um, in this one. I'm interested in your take. Will Curry and uh, Jordan Santos, what do you think? I think somebody's going to end up going to sleep in this fight. Um, I really have no interest on a side as far as this goes. I mean, Will Curry, like he's shredded, but this is, this, is it me or is the size just not there? Like he's ripped, but... The, the pictures are very flattering as far as his build. When we got the face-offs, Santos is much softer. But you could very evidently see a frame difference between those two of those guys of who's built for the division and who's not. Um, again, skill set-wise, both guys have holes. Uh, both guys most certainly can make a mistake and get finished. I would not be surprised to see this be fireworks. Um, that's the only way I'm looking to play this, to be honest with you. I really don't have a side. And I'm not going to give one out if I don't feel strongly. I think that somebody makes a mistake in this fight and we see a finish. Yeah. Santos hasn't been that like exciting to me. He's another one kind of like Ramos where it's like not the most exciting um, style in the world. I think Will Curry should be able to do whatever he wants, but I got to be honest, this price tag, there's no chance oh, I'm laying it on Curry. He leaves himself way too open to get popped. I'm with you that unders are the way to play this one. Um, I, I like Santos at times, man, his stance is really weak. Um, his striking isn't great, but Will Curry is going to absolutely leave his chin wide open several times. It's if Santos can actually land, um, land the big one. So um, my, I, I, there's, it's like minus 400 or something on Will Curry. And there's just no way that I can, I can trust Will Curry at minus 400 um, to get that done. Uh, I would also, Curry likes to start off really fast. Like he, he comes guns a blazing. Um, so, you know, we see round one, round one, round two, and then hey, with the decision and lost, uh, I, you know, I know he's got a decision win here, but um, I, I, I agree. The unders is kind of the only way to play that one. Hopefully it's, you know, not, not too crazy or not too juicy, but the under two and a half at a, as a parlay piece or something like that, not to go the distance uh, would certainly be a good way. Cause, cause uh, Curry's going to come for the finish and he could absolutely get countered and, and Santos could win. But if Santos wins, it's definitely not going the distance. Um, I don't see Santos winning a decision and mm -hmm. Curry is going to look to end this thing super early. So agree with you a hundred percent on that one. Could, could this look like our main event from last week where you had the big favorite, Mm. Out and he's fighting a guy who's taller and lankier, maybe not as strong, but just no striking defense to be heard of. Truth. And That's the only reason that went the distance because the guy has a cast iron chain. <laughs> you it's know, true. He true. Hell, after three rounds, I don't know if Curry has that chin. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. We predicted that main event upset uh, last week, so that, that they're going to happen. Uh, so you kind of got to just pick ah, which who, which guy has the biggest holes in this game. I think it might be uh, Will Curry. So uh, main event: Igor Cavalcante and Siok. I think it's so Siok Hyun Ko. Sorry, I butchered that one. one. That's a tough it's, one. It's it's <laughs> it's a tough one. I'm sorry about that. Uh, real quick though, I just do want to remind everybody: uh, we just did our uh, weekly recap, and uh, we've turned the profit ten straight profitable weeks, and uh, the dream year continues. So far, in 2024, 100 or 413 wins, 260 losses. We're up 156.8 units for a 10.1 percent ROI and we do have a five percent USC and Dana White can send your series pack that is up um MMA we only had one play last week we cashed that one and now UFC is back on track so looking forward to that and it's football season so NFL week one official pack is up that pack includes all of our futures so uh we're number one at wager talking futures over the last 300 
65 days. Um, I believe we've hit 76% of those over the last year. So you'll get all of our plays uh, for week one, as well as all the futures. Take advantage of that at uh, wagertalk.com. And if you could do us a favor and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, it is football season. So we got all kinds of uh, breakdown videos, individual g- game breakdowns uh, for all you guys uh, to enjoy and profit out of. Let's take a look at the main event. Uh, Cabal. I, I mean, the, the strange thing about Cavalcanti is here is like, it's, there's no video on on him really. It's mm-hmm. it's tough to find uh, the insider, the inside fighters league. I guess went under and they just took down all their video. So <laughs> <laughs> so all right, um, that alone just really makes me not want to bet this fight, and I certainly am not going to bet on Cavalcanti at minus three ten. There's mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, no way. I did find one video, very blurry, very wide shot of one of his fights, and he beat up an absolute tomato can. Um, I, I can't even verify that it was him. It kind of looked like him, but <laughs> the video was like so far away, and uh, the fight was so quick uh, that I. But I, th- I think it was. I think it was this one. I think it was the Humbucker Storty because it, it, it was a twenty second fight. Um, so Co, um, if we want to talk about Co, because you actually can find some of his fights um his uh his last two wins uh this guy uh in his 40s now jim uh and not to be outdone this guy is in his 50s (laughs) so uh take for that (laughs) what you want this guy is beating up elderly people and i don't appreciate that um (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like his striking looks decent. Um, but 2021, he fought a young guy and he got knocked out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I, I think he has fraud written all over him. To be honest with you. Like I, I, just watching him try and fight those older guys. I was like, what is going on here? Either he's taking it easy or he's just not that good. I don't think his striking is all that. I don't think it's that fast. Um, his level of competition has really been a joke. But at the same time, I'm not really sure what to expect from Cavalcanti. For me, this is a really easy pass. Uh, no way I'm, I'm putting money. I'm not putting in my money on, on this fight. Do you have any takes on it? What a, both of these guys are frauds. Let's not make bones about it. Okay? We don't have to, we're not going to sit here and hem and haw about uh, which one of these guys is a pretender. They both are. Okay. Whoever gets signed out of this fight and gets in the UFC, they're going to be on the fade list right quick. Okay. Question is, who's bigger fraud? <laughs> we, we're not going to know. The guy um, with no film or the guy that beats up old people? What a main event. <laughs> this could be a live bet, okay, on a side. But uh, look, and how do one of these guys not fall down in 15 minutes? I mean, somebody's going to just look. This, this screams to me like the prototypical Dana White Contender Series main event fight. Okay, it's just main event. All right, let's get these two guys who stink and get a knockout and a finish to end the night on a positive note. It it just screams, absolutely screams it to me. I don't think either guy is ever going to be anything special in their career. Uh, Like I said, we don't know anything about Igor, and you brought this up many a time. When we don't have film on a guy, a contender, sometimes that's like a bet on almost spot kind of deal. Like, we just talked about it last week with our Russian. It was like we didn't really know about him. He comes out and just puts the brakes on the favorite, you know? Absolutely. It was beautiful. Um, don't know how this one's going to play out, but I can tell you right now, there are holes abroad in this game, and there are <laughs> theories and landmines across everything. So it would not shock me to see this fight end in 20 seconds. It would not shock me to see one of these guys cast out in the second round. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good one. Distance. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think fight doesn't go the distance at a decent line or, or maybe a two and a half is, is going to have my interest, but not picking a side in this fight. Yeah, I, I, if, I mean, if you have to, the only way you do is play the plus money. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like that's the only way you do it. Probably the under, you're right, under is the way to go uh, on this one. But I, I would highly recommend not betting on this one. There's just too many unknowns. Uh, on this one. So, um, and you're right. Now we're finally back to contender series. You have a guy with no film. You have a guy who's beating up old people. You got a 22 year old. Uh, and then you got, Will. you have a, a guy that looks just shredded, incredible Hulk. You got a fire. Hasn't fought anybody except <laughs> debutants. 
Yeah. Like this is the contender this series I know and love. This is mm -hmm. this is very power slap s. Now we're getting back to the roots where we pull these this random random people with uh with great great stories uh, behind them. So, I would all right, say yeah. That first fight's probably the closest skill wise fight of the night. I, mean, I think this is going to be awesome. by far the, the yeah. best skill wise uh fight of the night, at least uh, my opinion. So, um, all right, guys, that's going to do it for us. Five percent. Uh, MMA and or, well, it's UFC. We'll call it MMA, but it's got UFC plays in there. Data White Contender Series play on there. We're 14 and four run um, in MMA after last week's Data White Contender Series win. So that's going to do it for us. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Good luck on your plays. We'll see everyone later. Good luck, guys.